Hi, everyone. I'm Shana J. And I'm so excited to be here today with my dear friend, Kirsten Ligman, who is an international, beautiful, forward thinking goddess and corporate trainer, also coach. And she, she is also founded along with her partner and uh, many people in, in her group, the uh, Foundation for Humanity, which we will talk to her about, see what they're doing right now, what they're into. And I just want to say thank you so much. What a crazy year we've had. And maybe we should first just give our condolences to you for, oh, it's hard for me to say. For our beloved. Oh Don't start off. This. I know. I'm sorry. I can't help it. He's, he was a hard one for me to, to get anyway, so that I'm sorry, sweetheart. Oh, but uh, yeah, but we move forward with all of the intentions and beauty and love that he gave and inspired us all to have and inspired us all to keep moving forward. And um, how are you? Just let people know mm. what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you, Shana. It's just so wonderful to be here. And I know you were going to interview Rennie. So for those of you who don't know who we're talking about is Rennie Davis, who was my husband, my beloved for 15 years. And he passed a year ago, a little over a year ago. And I am going to keep it together. <laughs> You've been crying for us. Um, and he was, you know, notable in the 60s. You know, he was one of the anti-war leaders and, and one of the Chicago Seven. And so, yeah, he has left an incredible legacy. And how am I doing? Better. You know, I did, I did a very conscious release um, mm -hmm. on his death day this year which was february 2nd so yeah. two, 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 yeah, two. You, you know he, wow he, he of course he would yeah, pick of course. A day like that you know <laughs> it's like yeah. okay honey this is very cool yeah so, yeah you know i i did a little process at the end of um 2021 you know to come up with the word of the year and what showed up for me was relinquish, mm. not release, not surrender, not let go, mm. relinquish. To me, that is a, such a powerful word, much more powerful in so many ways than, than all the others combined. And so the invitation has been to relinquish you know, even the attachment, any attachment to him, any attachment to what was, and any attachment to residual self, who I believe myself to be, you know, by myself or with him. So it's yeah. really been a very present word for me and, and in connection with him, very potent and challenging. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And, and in just in what you're saying, it fits with our topic today and mastering the moment is that when you're grieving, you literally are in the grief of your body, your feelings, the state that you're in. And it's the distraction that will take you away from it. But to fully experience that experience will actually have you help you move forward faster but also embracing the beauty that, that the body gives us all these feelings in these dimensions to feel in that moment. So how, how, how do you experience that? Well, it was really interesting, you know, and this, this can take us into about 10 different directions in our conversation, <laughs> but- um, Let it go where you like to go. Yeah. Well, it's, it was really interesting because grief is what I would call a sacred cow emotion. 
And in, so in, in our work, so one of the legacies that Rennie left and that he and I co-taught was the, the 13 life principles, which truly are to me, the foundation, the stepping stones, the key out of the uh, prison of the human condition into us as unlimited beings, us living in a new paradigm completely. And so um, one of them, one of those principles is called check egos. And the core of understanding the check egos principle is that emotions, so we make a distinction between emotions and feelings. Emotions are chemical and all emotions have an ego behind it, mm. thousands of them. And right. they trigger emotions and they trigger the chemical reaction in our body. And off we go down that rabbit hole. Um, and then there's feelings. Feelings is who we are at the essence of who we are. We are feelings and feelings register in the nervous system. They're electrical, not chemical. They produce good chemistry in our bodies, endorphins and, and, and uh, dopamine and all the yummy chemicals that you know make us feel good, but in their in their initiation are electrical. And so when we can make that distinction, then we can say, okay emotions is not human nature it's who we are at the moment as a species and we live a lot from emotions but they're not who we are right. and so then we get to look at all emotions and all egos behind it and so coming full circle to grief grief is an emotion even though we experience that in our human body form so much right now and we see loss in a grieving way but knowing what I did at the time when he chose to transition over to the other side, I had to walk my talk and say, okay, yeah. grief too gets to be analyzed, gets to oh. be looked at and understood as it's one of the sacred cows. You don't, you don't, question grief grief is what you do when you lose somebody or something mm -hmm. and I said I, I approached it from a different way now was I successful all the way no <laughs> you know every time I had to talk about him I was in tears and such and I kept being present to the fact okay grief is still an emotion who am I really understanding more the macro macro journey of of our evolution and mm -hmm. we are unlimited beings and so as unlimited beings we understand that there is no such thing as death he just went to the other side of the veil and i don't get to touch touch was the biggest thing i could oh. that i couldn't touch his face that i couldn't hold his hand that's what I missed most and hearing his voice, although we have 10 million meditations. So I hear yeah. his voice daily and recordings, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So much that he left in, in terms of wisdom. And, and one of my one of my desires is to go through a lot of that and pull out the nuggets to keep sharing with the world, you know, both of our work, but what he brought forward. Beautiful. Oh, I would love that. I'm sure a lot of people would love that. Yeah. So, and you'll let us know when that's available. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll post his, uh, his little sayings up too, because that's what I'm into right now is posting sayings that are just, just, you know, the simplicity of it can touch you and shift something inside. And it's like, you know, um, like what you do and what I do, we're so similar, yet we have different ways of doing it. And what's wonderful to, to keep um, um, sharing examples of what we do so that we can show people that in one moment in time, by them listening to us, they literally can have a complete shift and it wasn't about us. It was about where they are ready and yes. it's happening and it's in front of them and they're paying attention. And then 
something happens, you know, and we don't know and can't really predict that because I know for myself, it's happened for me all through my life in many, many different ways. But those are the nuggets that I live for. Oh, you know, I mean, they're not what I go after, but they're just like being present in my life makes me so happy, even when I'm sad, because I am feeling what's going on inside. I hope I'm using feeling in the right way now. <laughs> feeling what's going on inside of me and exploring it to see if there's any ego attachment to it. And I'm sorry, I don't quite get the distinction that you made, but, you know, I don't want to jumble up the words, but because I want to honor what, you know, what you're teaching. But the point that I'm making is that it's uh, th that being that present, you literally can cause your own awareness and vibration raising and awakening going to the next level just by being present yes. and the value to me that's one of the biggest values of it and the way I live and so I'm wondering so now being present is very much a part of your work and what you've been teaching in the 13 principles and so can you share a little bit more about how that shows up or, or what you experience it either way Absolutely. I mean, really, there. I would say being present, being in the moment is one of the core fundamental essentials for us evolving, for us waking up. You yeah, actually, when I talked to Remy on the phone about our interview, he said, oh, mastering the moment, that's, that's what my whole life's about. Absolutely. Like, yeah, that's for me too. So yeah. Oh, yeah. The last year or two of before he passed over, he would, his favorite pastime was to sit in his, his meditation chair and just listen internally be so present i mean he had a gift of of internal knowing and and receiving information yeah. and the more present he got the more he was able to tap into that yeah um but yeah you, you know we so so other distinctions so besides the you know feeling emotion distinction and one of the things you know about this work is we 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 love precision, you know, and so those are precision things more than anything. Um, so another distinction we make is there's the brain. This is artificial intelligence. Its primary role is to keep us alive in our, what he would call the preemie ward. We are a species that is going from asleep to waking up which is a miracle in and of itself. It truly is a miracle that we are waking up. The brain's function is to keep us alive until we are awake enough to be able to handle our own functions. Yeah. But then there's the mind and we all have a mind. And again, in precision, he, you know, he would describe the mind sitting in your biofield, this electrical matrix, this tube that is spinning around you. It's part of your body. It's part of who you are. The tighter in it is, the more you feel in pain. The wider you can expand, the more access you have, access to knowingness, access to creativity, those things and less pain. So, you know, I was, when I work with my clients and I can tell they're not feeling well, the first thing I always do is open up the biofield, open up, open up, give yourself spaciousness. And that always immediately shifts at least that first feeling sense, but I diverge. <laughs> so the, the mind sits in the biofield it is part of that, of who you are. But, you know, very few human beings have actually touched their mind yet. It is beyond our um, ability even sometimes to fathom what it can do. But you have to quiet the brain in order to access the mind. Quieting the brain is what brings you into the present moment. I mean, think about it. How often are you, you know, doing something and all of a sudden you realize, wow, for the last five minutes, my brain has just gone off, you know, thinking about some random thing or things, you know, 10 things in a row. And you yeah. really 
don't know what actually happened here in this present moment. Yeah. So one of the key practices for us to come into the present moment is absolutely quieting the brain. And of course, meditation is one of the key ways to do that. But you can do that throughout the day as you're because I mean, there so many people make the, the like, okay, I, I meditate, here's my spiritual practice. Okay, now I walk out of my meditation spa and go into life and off you go into your same habit patterns into your same processes, letting the brain just take over. Wow. And so to be in the present moment is to bring the brain in your and I put control in parentheses, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's understanding it is artificial intelligence and it needs it, it ultimately its role is to heed your command. Right. And so one of my practices is I have a little docking bay for my brain where it gets recharged. It's a <laughs> wonderful place, but that's where I send it again and again and again. It's like dog training. It truly is. You have to train your brain that it doesn't need to narrate everything. It doesn't need to explain everything. It doesn't need to put verbiage to everything you're experience, experiencing. And so you want to just keep quieting it and then shifting into the feeling state, which is what you were just talking about. Wow. When we can be fully present, then we get to be fully present with what's happening in this body. And that's when choice happens. And I'll leave that one as a, as a little, little, it's a little rip, nugget. Ripplet. Let me touch know. that. <laughs> exactly. Because that's the key. When we are present, we have choice. Mm -hmm. When we're in our brain, we don't have choice. Then we're under the control of our egos and our brain. Okay, I'll leave it at so, that. <laughs> well, well, let, well, let me let me use what you're saying and apply it to what I how I understand. Mm -hmm. how I work with people, how I work with myself, um, is that the mind, having it be in a bios, bios, bio field, mm -hmm. um, not quite sure how to, how to hold that. Because what, what I've learned from my teachers in India is that the mind is a function of the brain. And the mind is the one that runs... The, the stories and the experiences, the memories, the linking, the, you know, all of that. And the brain is, is the, uh, is separate from that. It's the, it's the bio, uh, it's, it's the way it, everything, the brain is responsible for the whole body. Mm -hmm. So the mind, it's not, it's not fully just responsible for the mind. The mind is kind of working on its own. So how, how I, I'm not quite sure how to make the jump to what you're saying. And I love what you're saying because it makes it makes sense too. I just wanna I wanna find a way to incorporate blend or or you know use both concepts as because people are, are needing this right now. This is really, really the main thing that I work with people on is the distractions that they have in what I call the mind, you know, and that every time they believe that and go with it, they're lost. They're, they're no there, there's no self, there's, there's only the, the rotation of random thoughts and um, the divine part of them, the, which is always there, isn't active. Yeah. It's kind of pushed aside. So my training is like bringing the it's kind of what you said, the way you described it, only it seems like it's different parts of the anatomy. So help mm -hmm. me see what you're seeing. I, I really want to get this. It's good. I will attempt to, to make it clear. <laughs> so, and in fact, I just recently heard another, another phrase that might be a bridge phrase that might help all of us understand this better. And that is actually the brain mind. So there's the brain, the brain mind, and then the mind. So okay. let's let's work with that just, to, right. just for the fun of it. So really the brain is the, as you said, is responsible primarily for letting the body function, 
for making the heart do what it does, the lungs, the breathing, the brain is responsible for keeping us alive, mm -hmm. period, end of sentence. Yeah. The brain mind, let's call it that, okay. you know, then functions behind that. And that's who we at the moment believe ourselves to be. So I would call that the residual self, the, everything that is made up of who we believe ourselves to be. And at this stage of our awakeness, it is pretty much egos that we've believed into existence. So this is not about a battle against egos. This is about gratitude uh, towards, you know, them helping us navigate this waking up process. Mm -hmm. And somebody has to always sit on this personality seat that everybody has it. It's like a, you think of it as a, like a, a cockpit, you know, a pilot seat. Somebody has to fly the plane. Yeah. If, and the name on that seat is your authentic self, your divine self, your, your, you know, we don't like using higher self because that puts a little bit of I a, don't like a, using a hierarchy <laughs> to it. It's yeah. just, you know, the, the, the more expanded self that is more in touch with the unlimited being that you are, right? Yeah. That's the name on that personality seat. But when fear started running our existence, the authentic self couldn't be in that chemistry. That, it doesn't live in that chemistry. It's never touched fear. So it can't be on the personality seat. And so the psyche started creating egos to handle situations. So you, your psyche created different egos to handle different situations. Mm -hmm. Their design was to be flushed out of the body immediately once they fulfilled their purpose. Yeah. The problem is over time, they became permanent residents yeah. and they started believing they were who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you started believing that they are who you are. And exactly. hence now you have this mantle of this residual self of who you believe yourself to be, which truly is not who you are. Yeah. At the essence, you are an incredible, magnificent, expanded, unlimited being with all these egos that are at the moment running the show. Yeah. And so that's what I would call the mind brain, which is more run by egos than anything. Yeah. Right? And, and that's, and, go ahead. Well, I just want to, let me finish the, the sure. last piece and then we can go yeah. into detail more. So the mind, as I use mind, is something that I don't think we even have a concept of yet. And I think most of your listeners probably have at some point or another gotten into a place where they've gotten so quiet that all of a sudden they had an insight that gave them 3D understanding in full panoramic view of, of something. There was no analysis, which is what the brain was, no thinking through step by step by step. It was a drop in. I mean, the, the few times that has happened for me, it was a visual, but the visual, the data contained within the visual was so massive. And in a nanosecond, under, I understood what I was looking at. Mm -hmm. That's mind capacity. Yeah. That's knowing this. And our minds are connected to universal mind. Yeah. So that's why I think it's absolutely essential that we make that distinction, that it is actually something, a, a different part of us. And all of our work is about, okay, what does it mean to wake up 100% and then go to aware and then conscious and then intelligent? All our evolutionary journey you know we're so at the beginning of it and so if we get to even just taste just a little bit of that mind we'll go oh we had no clue yeah spiritual yeah. humility right now is i think a real important trait to understand we are so at the beginning of this journey yeah. and we really yeah. don't know what is in store for us if we allow that and if we make the choice yeah or when 
<laughs> when is always i mean it's an eternal journey we can make that choice but we are at a choice point right now and i think that's what we're feeling at the moment in the world i agree and and that's why i do these kinds of talks so that we can literally have a moment where you know something can change for us and and we're not at a choice point anymore we're at a knowing point yeah and the knowing then takes over and we just, you know, we just follow that. Now, I don't even remember what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Sorry, we were talking about brain mind yeah, when I, you wanted to, to come in, that it was no, ego run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. If it comes back, it'll come back. Um, yeah, so this is super, super important, I think, for people to um, to really get that, you know, like you said, working from, I love the word you use, precision, yeah. is beautiful. It's like in the early days when Warner Earhart used to say, we got to be distinct, you know, about this domain and that domain and yes. know the difference and how we're operating within each one. And so I love this word precision, too. That's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah so. Um, what is what would you say the the values are for actually living in the moment and where people can get their uh, let's have some juice happen here you know <laughs> so what you know what could you say about the values let me let me start by a little story um this was my first job in california uh, at an environmental consulting firm. And I had this really cool boss. He was almost like a dad, um, but he he's very quickly realized that I was a good um, sparring partner, you know, intellectual sparring partner. So he would love to come at the end of the day just to my cubicle and start some like outrageous sentence, some, some outrageous statement and off we go, spar about it, right? Oh uh, yeah. And I remember him talking about uh, saying that, you know, I would rather go to hell than to heaven because heaven sounds so boring to me, <laughs> right? And, you know, he started with that sentence, you know, and, and I have thought about that sentence so much mm -hmm. because I know what it is that he's getting at. And it is the, the fact that when we are in our brains, we are entertained. It's a distraction. It keeps us you know, from being in the present moment, but it, you know, it, it entertains us. It is, it is that, it is a distraction. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when you haven't yet tasted the magnificence of the present moment, when you, when, when you haven't yet felt the beauty of that and the richness of what happens when you truly, truly come into the present moment, then coming into the present moment can seem horribly boring, almost like, you know, sitting on, on clouds with harps, you know, for <laughs> eternity, right? It's, it's, there is, there is a, there's a belief that somehow the present moment is not, um, there, there, it's boring. Let's, let's just say what it is. Okay. But there is, when you can really make that shift, and really the very, very first time I experienced the present moment was when I read Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. This was in the 90s, I remember. I read the book, and for some reason, you know how you said, suddenly those moments happen without any prompting. Right. You know, the subtle changes that happened, all of a sudden there was a quantum leap for three days. I was in presence like I had never experienced. Yeah. And there was a richness to it that is, yeah. is unspeakable. I know you know what I'm talking about. There yeah. is, it, it opens up a different dimension to experiencing life. Your senses are all turned on to hyper, right? You see things more color in, 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 
detail. You hear sounds, you smell things. So those are the main, you know, the, the, the main five senses, but then all the other senses turn on, the, the telepathic senses, you, you sense things more. And there is a richness of information and data that comes in that that is very different than you know the brain analyzing it yeah. so that's that's the first thing it's like if you haven't felt that yet then you haven't been in the present moment yet right right, right. You know? because you will know when you are truly in presence absolutely there is nothing boring about being in presence <laughs> brain is finally has shut up and not <laughs> narrating everything where you know that fern behind you where where the the experience of that fern becomes one of life where you where you feel it in a in a whole different way you yeah. see it you sense it you experience it in a whole different way and that that's true for all of life when you're in the present moment yeah um but then you know the knowingness you know i would say one of the big values is you don't have to think things through in fact if i may give you one more example oh absolutely um so i i was married once before before i met rennie um and this was in the late 1990s through early 2000s and it was a challenging marriage let's put it that way and it was getting towards your year seven. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was not doing well physically. I was definitely not doing well emotionally. And I kept going, do I stay and try to commit to this marriage or do I leave it? And I would just go back and forth and trying to think through oh, it and back and forth and back and forth. And it was miserable. Oh my gosh, totally miserable. <laughs> and at the time I had this incredible mentor and he basically said, let's go do a three-day vision quest in the desert. The mm -hmm. first time ever. I'd never fasted before. I'd never been doing anything. I mean, it was like brand new. So we went into the San Diego desert in the middle of frigging nowhere, you know, hardly any vegetation. And I was to be in a 10-foot circle, right? And the only reason I was allowed to step out of that circle during the three days was to go relieve myself, right? Mm -hmm. That was it everything else was in that circle hardly any distractions um and so that's where i was for those three days and i went into this into this vision quest you know of course i'm like okay i'm not gonna have any attachments to outcome you know like you read of course the native american stories of you know whole visions coming in like okay i'm not gonna be attached to having that right but i was like okay Finally, I'll have time to do a pros list and a cons list, you know, pro of staying, con of staying, you know, and I will have time to finally think this through, right? <laughs> you know what happened? What happened? Over the, the next day or two, as I was in this circle by myself with no distraction except a hummingbird visiting and a lizard having its daily commute and watching that. As my brain got quiet, I stopped thinking. And the first night out of the desert, I had a dream. And in that dream, I was telling my childhood friends from Germany, they were all adults in the dream. I was telling them I'm divorcing this man. Ah. That was it. But this, there was no pros and cons. There was no lists made, nothing. Yeah. What I did is I came to myself. And the yeah. only way I did that was to become quiet. Right. And then the answer came in, in such certainty. The moment I had that dream, there was no more fretting. There yeah. was no more, oh, what should I? I knew with every fiber of my being, that was my decision. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the beauty of of being present absolutely you to think things through you you touch something so much wiser in yourself but you can't if your brain's going <laughs> yeah 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 because yeah. there's there's always that analyzation going on about everything i just at myself came through five days of total clarity i guess i, I could i'm not sure what to call it but being in the moment so clear 
that even when I, I, it, I, it was with me all day or I, I was out of the way, you could say. Yes. Yes. And uh, I went to the farmer's market and I was tasting something and it literally shocked me like I had never, ever tasted food, but yes. somewhere there was a memory that I eat. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I tasted this thing and I'm like, oh my God, this is like, you know, it was so much more heightened than ever before. And I could literally hear the leaves in the trees, you know, yes. whispering a song. I mean, it was just phenomenal when that part of you that is just so active stops. Yes. And I started noticing something new uh, that I had never realized that I noticed before. And that is levels deep levels of stress that are happy and not happy so like even when when the body gets really excited about something and i you know get all excited in the past there was like an automatic nervous system thing moving around in me and it literally would cause me stress to be happy because I think that there's a lot of story around it. And, the, and then the other side of it was, was being so absolutely still that this, that, you know, like hearing a noise that was really loud, you know, of course, I, I know that, but it, it, it just, it almost had a reverberation. It jars you. Right? It jarred me in my energy field. I was like, it came out there and then it came in closer. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know. So it's like an so electric yeah. shock, isn't it? Yeah. So yes. to to really fine-tune the stresses that affect my particular biosphere, the, the whole of who I am, was just really phenomenal new awareness for me. Well, and I think you're speaking to another really, really important part, and we've touched on it a little bit already, but I think, you know, going deeper into that is important. When you're present, you're present with the system, you're present with what's going on in your body. You know, one of the other things during that marriage, that first marriage that I realized, I, I had no clue what to feel or how I felt. Like, like we would have a fight, I'd be crying. He'd go, why are you crying? I'm like, I have no idea. Wow, yeah. And so this practice of bringing myself more and more and more into the presence has allowed me to open up more and more to this system. And to, you know, I love that you gave that example of, you know, happy and stress underneath. Yeah. You know, we, we think everything is so delineated and yeah. and and straightforward it's not yeah. because there is the mind brain you know thinking ourselves into well this is happy but then you tune into the body and the body posture says something very very different and so this work of get coming into the moment is bringing these systems you the awareness unit the awareness that is existing within this body and your body system and lining them up yeah. so that there is complete authenticity, there's complete alignment, there's internal harmony, there's not this sense of, oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy and there is stress in your solar plexus. If you're not present, you're not aware of that, that, exactly. that stress in the solar plexus. Yeah. Right? And so a lot of like one of our principles is called love yourself, love your body. And it's all about understanding the body system and, and coming into alignment with it. Understanding the body itself is on a journey of evolution. Its awareness is also evolving. It's here to become the vessel for you for eternity. Yeah. So we better get to learn to know it, to, to love it, to, to communicate with it, to see what does it need. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if you're not present. You yeah. just can't. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Because the, the, the amount of stress that people are living with right now, you know, at whatever level their awakened state is, 
whether they call themselves a newbie or they're someone who's been on the path for a while. And, you know, there's still stresses that they are not in touch with yes. that are running their life. All of a sudden they're, they're pre they could be present for a moment and then they're gone <laughs> because there's not an awareness of going away. Yes. There's the, that the body is doing something. So <clears throat> when I went deeper into that, excuse me, <clears throat> I realized, oh, this system in this body has, has experienced PTSD for most of my life. My, um, I was an abused child. I had um, uh, verbal and physical abuse. And um, I had no memory of anything for the longest time. And then all of a sudden, memories started coming back and I had to figure out how to place them all. And, um, and the parasympathetic, parasympathetic system was mostly fired off into fight or flight. So that's what the body is used to. And for me to be quiet enough to actually get in touch with, aha, so those systems on some level are still running even though I feel better, calmer, peaceful, people look at me and go, you, you're so peaceful. You know, how, how could you have a level of stress? I just shared this with a friend. She said, you, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and enlightening at the same time that I got to see, oh my gosh, my experiences still live somewhere in my body. Yes. That's phenomenal. Yes. And the thing that that I think is so important about what you're saying is we as we evolve as we become more spiritually mature and wake up having the courage to be the observers of self without becoming it so again yeah. this this check egos you know the primary uh, tool that we use with check egos is notice and observe most people are get pretty good at notice. They really are. Yep, I'm in a reaction. Yep, I'm, a, I'm having anger right now. Yep, I am judging right now. You know, we've gotten really good at notice. The next step, the next level of practice is observe. Truly observe. And the way I describe it, and I have this process I take my clients through, I call that the 100% observer can't be 99%. It has to be 100% yeah, yeah. Where, I, where I pull the larger part of the, 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 the authentic self part away from the actual experience. And from that neutral, unconditional place, now we observe the emotional reaction and not just observe it, but actually pull it out absolutely like trigger it more so that you can see how is it pulling your strings where in the body do you contract right. what does it feel like is there acid feeling in your in your throat does it does it contract your heart does it does it does it do something in your little toe i mean some people have leg issues the moment we we amplify the emotion but as long as you can stay the 100% observer where there's you're not affected even though you're, the emotion is being felt, when you can get to that place and understand what thoughts the egos are putting in your brain, all the, the lies, true, yeah, they're lies. Absolutely. When you can do that, that's when you, when you let, when they have to let go of control, the, the yeah. egos function in the shadows of your awareness. Yeah. The moment you're willing to take the risk and have the courage to pull them out without being pulled in, that's, that's the key to the, uh, to the, to leaving that prison of the human condition. Wow. That's awesome. The way you just spelled that out. And, and that was, again, a tool that came to me by happenstance. I, I, you know, I knew, you know, we were practicing notice and observe. And then Rennie and I were on a, it was an RV trip, 2009. We did a three month tour across the country. We did some workshops and such. And I remember shortly before we left, 
I watched a movie, Will Smith's movie. Um, oh, shoot. Concussion. <laughs> Was it the concussion one? No, no. Oh my God, I can't believe I can't think was of the name. Was it the one about dating? No, it was, it was, again, we're talking, you know, or, you know, late 2000s. Um, anyway, it'll come, but it was a movie where. Oh, uh, like most a, a of you, most of thing about ha happiness, the pursuit of happiness. No, 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 no. No. Okay. no, this was a dystopian movie. This was where most of humanity had been infected by a virus that either killed them. Oh, yes. Turned, turned them into like these horrible monsters that would eat other humans or you know do something yeah. so he was a doctor left in new york city you know totally death um you know desolate you know except for these creatures that couldn't you know live in the light so they functioned in the shadows and at nighttime and i remember watching this movie and the emotion that got triggered was dread pure unadulterated dread when I saw those humanoid creatures yeah it triggered something in me I don't know if I you know past life I mean I have no idea and it stayed with me and and scenes from the movie would come back again and again it was like torture right uh -huh. for months and I remember being on this trip and I was laying in the RV this was an afternoon and I said enough enough you know how i'm sure many of your listeners know that feeling of like done done i'm done, I'm done. Yeah. yeah and what i did is i somehow did that i shifted into 100 percent observer and then i said okay bring it on and i kept bringing up the images from the movie again and again and i could feel the dread rising in me but because i was outside of the experience as the observer mm -hmm. it it was like okay bring it on fascinated yeah. you know yeah. fascination is such an important you know feeling state to be in in this so i kept bringing it up and up and up and up and up and it was like oh my god this is you know how much more all of a sudden i reached an apex of that emotion and then it started dropping off. I kept bringing up uh, the images and it kept dropping off and more and more and more. And all of a sudden there was that moment where it went poof, gone. And it was gone and it has never come back. Yeah. That is the power of being a hundred percent observer and it takes That's risk. Yeah. It takes courage. And when you can do it, it is one of the most effective things where you don't have to process. There's no long-term processing. And we do yeah. this in an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. totally get that. We, uh, my teachers from India gave us the same, the same process. I realized later it was from the witness. Mm -hmm. And it was just stay in your heart with what the feel, whatever you're feeling. <laughs> and it and at some point you go you do you shift uh, i did anyway i speak for myself i shifted from being in the fear of it like being in the emotion or the feeling and then literally going to the witness and going but that's not mine yes because my my divine was really who was in charge and literally the the whole the energetic of it shifted out of the body and never again returned so but then later i realized there's strains sometimes of bits of different memories that have similar uh feelings so it's it's this is so good kirsten i mean you i we could talk probably for a couple of hours on this but in order to keep it you know uh let's leave them hanging a little bit <laughs> and just well, yeah may i asked to sure. you know since we put a little pebble in around choice can i just uh, oh yes circle on that Absolutely. because really what we're talking about is shifting out of being victim to our emotional state, yeah. to understanding emotions are not who we are, egos are not who we are. And when you can shift into a hundred percent observer, uh -huh. now you have the choice 
to say enough yeah and do the process and that's when we get into the whole conversation around being addicted to the chemistries of mm. anger resentment judgment they're addicting those are addicting uh, chemistry in the body and so that's why it's so hard to step out of them but this is the choice point we're at right now if we're going to make this leap in awareness we've got to say no enough we are going to we're going to wake up, we're going to make this choice to, to observe and choose to let go of these emotions, these egos, so that we can free ourselves to become who we are meant to be, divine yeah. humans, you know, unlimited beings on, a, on an eternal journey of evolution. We have to make this choice right now. We've got to make this choice. There is the, no, there is another choice, but the consequences yeah. are, not, are not fun. You know, we're not going to go there. I call it, for me, it's a trigger. Um, it's a, a trigger into my divine awareness to say conscious choice. So I use that that wording a lot, conscious awareness, conscious choice, and, and conscious being, conscious state. I Because for me, it's like moving it into the not me. It's It's not personal. It's not about me. It's about... What is the divine plan having for me? What a divine intelligence, you know, showing me in this moment, bring a conscious awareness. And so this, the mastering the moment um, and conscious choice are very, very important for me. Yeah. So, so beautiful. It's an individual choice. I want to really, from, from my perspective, uh -huh. is this is not a, we collectively go this way or we collect. Oh no, I'm not talking collective either. Yeah. Every human being right now is being yes. asked to choose. And the way Rennie would call the not fun choice is going on the scrap heap of evolution. Yeah. That's how he would say it. You scrap, know? So like, the and scrap, there's nothing, scrap heap of evolution. <laughs> I love his terminology. It cracks me up. Yeah. You know, it's either that, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And a no, lot of people not at all. wanting to finish existence because it is so exhausting. Yeah. Existence is exhausting to people. It, so oh, we, yeah. a lot of people are rather would finish existence rather than continue the journey of evolution. And there's nothing wrong with it. No, you know, it's but not. You get to feel the choice in yourself and yeah. you know I mean I think you and I you know we're, we're we're speaking to having tasted enough of that like waking up moments these precious little moments that is like yeah I don't want to go that way even yeah. you know it might be frigging hard at times but that's where I want to go yeah I don't care if it's hard because life the other way is harder to me yeah. I agree I yeah, I'd rather rather t take my conscious choice. And I did not mean that to be a collective, not at all. I meant it to be very personal um, because I would choose something different than you would, you know, and that's important because all of our pieces are important. And I am just starting to get into another organization, a spiritual organization where I'm going to be leading some events. And so I'm really excited about that because keeping these distinctions that we're talking about uh, in precision <laughs> with who we are, that we, um, we're constantly leaving an, a, tr a tread of seeds that are going to burst at some point. They're going to blossom, germinate, blossom, germinate, blossom, germinate, and until they get bigger like this gorgeous plant yes. behind that's why I had to bring her in because she's I, so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> she <is> glorious. Yeah. <laughs> Glowing is behind you. Isn't she? Yeah. 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 Love so her. tell us, tell everyone um, what how they can find you and, and what you're offering right now and what it what is your heart right now? Yeah. Well, so the easiest way right now, as I'm still in this re- shifting from you know not Rennie Rennie not being here you know I mean we did everything together so I took you know the year to basically crawl into a hibernation healing cave is what I called it you know and so really just recently I've come out of it and so the easiest way to get hold of me is um, to email me um, kirsten at ffh.org 
or you can, you know, if you hear this interview, so what I'd like to offer for people, for one, is if you're interested, I'm offering free, free sessions, you know, to talk about anything that is up for you. If there's a challenging relationship or if you're a conscious entrepreneur, you know, I do have business background. And so, you know, a lot of my clients are in the conscious entrepreneurial world, conscious leadership. So if there's anything you're struggling with and you want to, you know, different perspective, you know, I'm offering free, you know, coaching sessions. So, mm -hmm. You know, you can either email um, uh, Shana with, you know, with your information oh, that she can sure. pass on pass to me, on. or you can email me directly. So it's K-I-R-S-T-E-N at FFH.org, Foundation, Foundation for Humanity, FFH.org, exactly. exactly. right? .org, exactly. Yeah, that org, yes. yeah. And that's the, at the moment the easiest. I will be reteaching the life principle training that no. Rennie and I co-taught for two years in a row. I, I will be reteaching that probably at the starting at the end of June. And so I'm really excited about that because it is such a powerful foundation laying for, you know, becoming who we want to become, you know, in this new paradigm. Absolutely. And, and having the support to stay there because there's that flip-flopping that our, you know, yeah. our egos and our, you know, our whole system is geared to go yes, no, yes, no. And so that we constantly have the support. So get Kirsten on your side, man. She's offering free sessions. I, I mean, they're just probably worth about five to $800 per time <laughs> per hour for you. So this is an opportunity, you guys. We don't know how long she's going to offer this. So take advantage if you really want to get clear on something. And and uh, I'll be happy to pass on anyone. Just, you know, contact me if that's easier for you. I'll be happy to pass along your information to her. So anything last thing that you want to share with, the, with everyone? <sighs> I just so appreciate you opening up this conversation. I think this is where we're at. You know, one of my mentors once recently actually said, you know, I have so many people who say, oh yeah, I know that, I know that, I know that. She's like, I know you know it, show me that you can embody it. Exactly. So that is our work now is can we take it from this intellectual understanding, which, which we needed, yeah. but can we now take it into our bodies in such a way that we can walk through life, literally radiating love, life, and joy from our being and being the people that that are representing that are wanting to lead into the new paradigm can we be the people yeah. versus going to a meditation and and understanding yes we create our own reality and then we step out and immediately blame some somebody for i don't know spraying your 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 pants when they drove by yeah. It's, that's the straddling we've been doing and it's time to not straddle anymore the old paradigm with the new paradigm we've got to make the full leap full you know what you guys the what she's saying is so true one let go when you actually let go will show you how important it is to keep going yeah it's so motivating it, it gives you your own confidence level to keep moving ahead, no matter how tough it is, because it feels so amazing to be totally free and have those uh, everything that we've been carrying around for years. Yeah. We have no need anymore. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're done with that. We're so done with that. Stop letting that be your identity. It's time to exactly. let go of that identity and choose who you want to become, but we've got to strip away everything we've believed into existence to come back to that core nugget of who we are. And from there, yeah. we get to build who we want to be, design yeah. who we want to be. And that's our choice. And that's the other thing we have to understand. We are, at, we are creators. That's what I was thinking. I was just thinking that that is creation. Yeah. Imagine being in charge of your cells in every moment. Yes. As creation. Yes. 
Yes, being in charge of yourself. Very yeah. Well. That's that's the essence of this understanding that you can be yeah. in charge of yourself in every moment. Yeah. Yeah. And there's those tools and practices and steps galore to get us there. Yeah. They're here. It and just takes that heart. Body. That yep, take that one step and then take another one. And hey, a free session is a way to start. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God bless you, sweetheart. I am so grateful that you had the time to come on with me. And um I will put your description in the, you know, and your links and everything in in the on the YouTube. And then people can go and subscribe to you Urban Wisdom, which mm -hmm. is the name of the YouTube channel and right. my podcast channel. And we're on Spotify and, and Anchor and all those other places where it goes. I don't know, it just goes. Nice. <laughs> so nice. So big blessings to you and everyone that's listening this far and take advantage and we'll maybe we'll do this again. I would love to. Obviously, there is many rabbit holes we could go down. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, big blessings you to you. So much. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you sweetheart. all. Big hugs. Mm, take care. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm.